Hello everyone, myself Vinod Bandare and today I am going to teach the computer and this is the first class for the class 8 and a review class for class 10. Our first, first topic is how computer works. Here we can see the three unit, input unit, central processing unit and output unit. Input unit, there are many devices, uh, keyboard, mouse, etc. And these input devices are responsible in taking the input from the user and those inputs are sent to the central processing unit for further processing and in central processing unit we can see there are three units memory control unit and arithmetic logic unit memories are generally registers and these registers are made up of many capacitors and these capacitors are responsible in holding the charges in the form of zero and one that is positive and negative we assume that 0 means off and 1 means on. Next is central processing unit and this uh, next is control unit. This control unit is responsible in controlling the memory unit and central processing unit. This control unit is also responsible in uh, managing all the operations that occur inside the computer system. The finally the output unit, the uh, result is processed and uh, data is processed and the result is finally sent to the output unit and there are many output devices like monitor, printer, etc. and these output devices are responsible in giving the output to the user. Now next topic is how CPU fetch the data. Generally CPU fetch the data from random access memory. In this picture we can see the central processing unit and main memory. Main memory means RAM and ROM and here in between we can see different level of cache memory are available here level 1 cache memory, level 2 cache memory and level 3 cache memory. This main memory means uh, RAM and ROM but here we assume as a random access memory. This random access memory first load the file from hard disk that is secondary disk and that file is finally sent to the central processing unit for the process further processing through different level of cache memory. These cache memories are smaller in size and uh, responsible in holding the data for temporary purpose. Level 1 cache memory is smaller than level 2 and level 2 cache memory is smaller than level 3. But the level 1 cache memory is faster than level 2 and faster than level 3. Now we can see here memory hierarchy. The first is register memory. These register memories are embedded inside the CPU and uh, these are very smaller in size um, and uh, this is uh, holding the data in the, in the form of charges that is 0 and 1. Next is cache memory and this cache memory are also smaller in size and these are very near to the central processing unit and these cache memories are responsible uh, in holding the data for temporary purpose. If the CPU need to face the same data next time then the operation will be quite faster due to the cache memory. Next is main memory. The main memories are the primary memories and we can say RAM and ROM are the main memories are also said to be the primary memories and these main memories are responsible in holding the data. This random access memory um, is responsible in holding the data for temporary purpose while uh, read only memory hold the data for permanent purpose. Magnetic disks. In this category, we can write magnetic disks and optical disks. These two disks are the quite similar and having the uh, same category. And last is magnetic tapes. Magnetic tapes are quite larger in size, but it sizes, uh, but its speed is quite um, slower. Now programming basic. The first is machine level language. The machine level language, we can say the machine codes, uh, 0 and 1, the machine level language. Next is assembly level language. This assembly level language consists of many mnemonics like add, sub, etc. These mnemonics are finally converted into the machine level language, uh, 0 and 1. Uh, for the conversion or language translating, uh, assembler is used for the assembly level language. Now we have the high level language. QBasic is one of the high level language of basic family. There are other more uh, languages in the basic families like Quick Basic, PB, Visual Basic, Turbo Basic, etc. The C is middle level language. Uh, it is also said to be structural language. 
uh, it is neither high level language nor low level language so it is called middle level language now we have other high level programming language like c++ java javascript c sharp python r ruby on rails etc this c++ is object oriented programming language used for developing software desktop application as well as console applications uh, java is general purpose programming language and used for uh, every purpose like embedded system console application web application etc and javascript is especially used for front end design uh, it is used for web application c sharp uh, is used for console application desktop application uh, also we can do gaming in c sharp uh, python is generally used for artificial intelligence data science and uh, uh, web designing as well uh, r is used for data science PHP is used for backend development. Ruby on Rails um, it is developed by Japanese developer and used for backend purpose. Kotlin uh, by the 2016 Google has announced Kotlin as official language uh, instead of Java. So Kotlin is uh, used for Android application development. Objective C it is the older programming language of Apple and nowadays uh, Swift is used for Apple application development. And uh, that is next programming language and it is lightweight programming language. Next is Flutter. This Flutter is the language that implement the Dart and uh, used to produce the hybrid, hybrid application. The hybrid application means uh, it is used to develop uh, iOS application as well as Android application. Uh, next we have React Native. It is uh, developed by Facebook used for uh, hybrid application development. Next is ASP.NET. It is deployed by Microsoft Corporation and used for uh, backend development. Now we have program design tool. We have three program design tool. The first is algorithm. Next is flowchart. Next is pseudo code. This algorithm is a step by step um, process to design the program. Uh, we can see the example here. Algorithm to find sum of two numbers. Uh, that enter two numbers a and b this a and b are the two variables where we can input the data and store in this variable next step we have the add a plus b and store in c after adding the a and b we have to store the result in c so we have to add the next variable that is c here finally we have to display the output and end now flowchart is the pixel representation of the program we can design a flowchart uh, in this way the the program is uh, same uh, addition to find the addition of two numbers that input number one and number two number one and number two are the two variables we can write here a comma b also sum is equal to number one plus number two the result is stored in the sum and uh, finally we have to print the print the output print sum here we have to notice that the start and end are written in the oval input and output are written in inside the parallelogram and calculation is done inside the rectangle we have to keep in mind this thing the next is pseudocode pseudocode uses the english like words uh, and follow the procedure step by step next topic we have the introduction and in this class we will do just the introduction of the qbasic QBasic is one of the high level programming language that allow us to write a program and with the help of QBasic language we can write a program and QBasic is a high level programming language because uh, QBasic uses the English like words and mathematical expressions and the program written in QBasic need to be converted into machine codes because machine only understand the machine codes so any high level language should be converted into machine codes through language processing software and different programming language uses the different language processing software so qbasic uses language processing software as an interpreter uh, here in qbasic the interpreter is responsible in converting or translating the high level language into machine code qbasic provides working area to the to write a program and it has its own interpreter qbasic converts one statement of a program into machine codes at a time at a time, the QBasic interpreter converts one instrument of a program into machine code. Q 
Cubasic editor checks the syntax error and capitalizes the Cubasic reserve word. In Cubasic, there are many reserve words. Reserve words are also said to be keywords. So these keywords should be capital. So if you write the small letter in the Cubasic editor, uh, it automatically capitalizes. Cubasic editor provides all the facilities that are required for the programs. In Cubasic editor, you can write, edit, run and debug the program. for today thank you